Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Kelly Warren, and I'm Executive Director for Family Health Clinical Services. We're a community health center uh, within the Mobile County Health Department. And I'm pleased to be here with you today to give you an update on the COVID-19 situation and as it impacts our county, state, and world. So um, first, I'll start out with uh, some information, give you some data updates, and then we'll move into some information regarding Governor Ivey's um, Safer at Home order that was uh, issued uh, and reviewed yesterday. Uh, it will go into effect Thursday at 5 o'clock. Um, and then we'll go in and, and answer some of the questions that you all had sent in to us yesterday and um, encourage you if you have questions based on information shared today, if you'll just type those um, underneath this broadcast, we'll get those answers to you. So um, without any further ado, um, Today, uh, Dr. Laura Cepeda, our Chief Medical Officer, had announced that Mobile County has passed the 1,000 case threshold um, as for positive cases for COVID-19 in Mobile County. Um, and additionally, within the United States, over a million people have been diagnosed with COVID-19. So we know that these numbers continue to grow day by day and just encourage the public to be vigilant in their prevention practices. Um, so today in Mobile County, um, the, uh, at the beginning of the day, we had 1,008 confirmed positive COVID-19 cases um, with 46 deaths in Mobile County attributed to the disease. Um, in the state of Alabama, we've had 6,779 positive cases with 242 deaths due to COVID. Uh, and to take it even further, um, for the United States, there was 1,015,289 positive cases with 58,355 deaths um, thus far. Um, with that, we'll move into um, some more specific data. Uh, I know a lot of times people wanna hear how the data breaks out and what it looks like as far as the demographic uh, characteristics of the individuals. Um, for those 1,008 positive COVID patients that we have in Mobile County, that's an increase of over 30 of, of 39 patients since the last time we reported this data. Um, of those, 124 are hospitalized. Um, the age range for our positive cases, uh, for zero to four years old, there are six patients. For five to 24 years old, there are 84 patients. 25 to 49, 364 folks who are positive. 50 to 64 years, 271 positives. And then over 65 years old, 267 positives. Uh, the gender breakout between the two, uh, we have 601 female positive cases, 405 male positive cases, and one unknown. Uh, the racial breakdown, 409 of the positives are African American, 6 are Asian, 292 are white, and 301 or other are unknown. Um, currently, the, the zip codes that we uh, can, I, can release information about and um, that are experiencing the largest number of cases um, is 36605 followed by 36608, 36695, 36609, and 36582. Um, I know we additionally have some, some other information that we usually provide, but it was not available at this time of this report due to um, some issues with the, with the database. Um, whenever we look at the 124 patients who were hospitalized or have been hospitalized with COVID, um, 12 of those were between the ages of 25 and 49 years old, 34 were ages 50 to 64, and 75 were older than 65 years old. Um, of those patients that we know um, their sex, 62 were male, 62 were female, and um, that concludes our information on our, on our hospitalized uh, COVID patients. want to just caution everyone to let them know that we are still continuing to see an upward trend in cases. Um, it's a gradual trend and just want to make sure that the, the public practices um, good social distancing, um, good you know infection control, cover your cough, wash your hands, stay home if you're sick, please. Um, and when you're out, we encourage everyone to really uh, make sure to be, be wearing some kind of um, protective face covering. Um, but make sure that if you have children who are under the age of two, do not put a face mask on them. Do not put a um, protective face covering on them. Um, so with the governor's uh, safer at home order that goes into effect at five o'clock tomorrow afternoon, that's tomorrow, uh, the Thursday at five o'clock, 
Um, it lifted uh, some um, of the requirements, or it will lift some of the requirements um, for the original stay-at-home order. And so we have um, good resources that are posted on our Facebook page to reference the Safer at Home order, um, as well as a, a new Frequently Asked Questions page that has come out that helps to clarify um, some of those many questions that everyone has um, surrounding the Safer at Home order. Um, and so it's a simple two-pager, breaks down what's new and what's staying the same. And then this is your FAQs page that you'll see also accessible on our Facebook page. So take a moment to, to look over that, please. Um, one of the questions that we, or a couple of questions we've gotten as a result of that is, um, you know, what can we do now that we are moving into a new phase of response and a new, a, a new normal, if you will? Um, and so the health department's recommendation is that you continue to practice, you know, good infection control, good prevention measures. Like I mentioned earlier, wash your hands, cover your cough with a tissue and throw it away. Um, wear that protective face covering anytime you're out in public or doing that, you know, essential shopping. Really don't go out if you don't have to um, and just observe all of the, uh, the requirements that are set in place with the uh, safer at home order. Um, People want to know how we're going to continue to manage those growing cases uh, as they occur. Public Health continues to do case contact investigations where we're getting in touch with the individuals who are testing positive and kind of track, backtracking to see who all they've been around before they started feeling ill and then after they uh, were ill to see who all else we need to contact um, to advise them on um, testing and uh, just prevention measures that they need to be taking. Uh, as well as just paying attention to their own health um, to ensure that if they get sick, they know um, what to do to seek treatment and to, to also decrease the likelihood of, of other people getting sick. Um, another question we had was that the Birmingham mayor had requir required face masks and wanted to know if Mobile County was going to do that. Um, at this point, we, the health department, are not going to mandate face coverings um, at this time. Our you know, continued stance is to strongly recommend and strongly encourage the public to put on protective face coverings anytime they're going in public, um, anytime they're doing any of that essential retailing. Um, just be smart and, and do the things that you can to protect your own health. Um, a lot of this is about personal responsibility and uh, what we can do to protect, protect ourselves and our loved ones um, just to make sure that we don't get sick. Um, so, uh, again, just want to strongly let everybody know that um, while we're wanting everyone to put on protective face coverings, children under two should not wear a protective face covering. So, um, make sure that that is not happening, please. Um, okay, so we'll get into some questions from April 28th. Um, these are the questions we received on Facebook. And the first one says, uh, we see the data for total hospitalizations statewide to date for COVID. Would it be possible to see that on a daily basis to see how many patients are currently hospitalized and watch that number increase and decrease on a daily basis? Um, so that information is information that is reported daily to the Alabama Department of Public Health um, Center for Emergency Preparedness through um, something that's called AIMS and that stands for our Alabama Incident Management System. Um, those data are not available to the public at this time, um, so that's why we try to give you what we are able to give you um, in these Facebook Live um, presentations and, and streams. Um, so another question, how can you get tested to find out if you've had COVID-19? Um, husband was very sick in February with all the symptoms, tested negative. Uh, other day, the pulmonary doctor said that they may have had it and needed to be tested. So we're hearing several people say, say things like this. So anybody who meets the ADPH criteria for testing can call our number at 251-410-6243. That's 251-410-MCHD-6243. Um, and you can schedule an appointment for COVID testing at our downtown location at 251 North Bayou Street. Um, you have to meet the criteria for testing though. Um, and so those criteria are that the patient is symptomatic with a minimum um, measured fever or subjective fever or cough or shortness of breath and the patient is hospitalized or the patient is immunocompromised or has other comorbidities so has other chronic illnesses or the patient is 65 years old or older 
or the patient is a health care worker, or the patient is associated with a long-term health care facility. Um, and so some comorbidities that, that you may know, it's defined as chronic lung disease, diabetes, heart disease, chronic kidney disease, immunocompromised neurologic disorders, and pregnancy. And I know that's a lot to remember, so um, we will have that posted uh, so that you can review it to see if you would meet the criteria for testing. Um, let's see, so we gotta thank you for the daily updates. That's fantastic. Um, so while many states are planning a gentle reopening, most will be taking temperatures at the door. While this is a good idea, it doesn't let us know if a person is carrying COVID-19 and is asymptomatic. Do you know um, what percentage of positive cases are asymptomatic in Mobile County who have tested positive? Okay, so a lot to unpack there. So while we know that checking is a safeguard, it's not foolproof because of asymptomatic or pre-symptomatic infection. Um, we've learned so far from outbreaks in congregate settings that a large percentage of our COVID positive patients might have sub subclinical infection. We don't know, um, while we don't know what that percentage of the general population are infected, and we don't know what the percentage of those infected are asymptomatic. Um, we are working though every day to expand our capacity for case investigation and follow up to try and obtain that type of information so that we can then share it with you. Um, are all employees in restaurants required to wear gloves or just food handlers? Okay, so we have a wonderful um, inspection services department and there are um, certain employees in restaurants who are required to wear um, gloves. That's all defined in our food rules, um, which can be located at our mchd.org website under inspection services. Um, so that is something that we are actually looking at. I know the recommendation has been out um, from several places or discussed um, for everyone in a setting to wear gloves. We don't know that that's necessarily the way to go. Um, I definitely would say that any restaurants and, and workers in restaurants need to comp comply with the food rules as they are written. So wear gloves. If you normally had to wear gloves, you should be wearing gloves. Um, but the question is to other, if additional folks need to wear gloves in those settings um, is something that, that the team is, is looking into. Um, really the best thing uh, for anyone, food handler or not food handler, is to practice good hand washing and just be vigilant. Um, be sure to uh, be washing your hands um, regularly and probably more so uh, than you normally would. Um, I own a preschool when I reopen. Will MCHD advise of guidelines or should I just refer to the CDC guidelines? So we say follow the CDC guidelines and pay close attention to the governor's new safer at home order that goes into effect at five o'clock tomorrow. Um, we'll have the link to that order on our Facebook page. So please um, take a look at that. Um, let's see. I see that we had um, a drop in cases by four and this was yesterday. Um, would you agree that they should start the 14-day count of reduction of positive cases in order to move to phase one of reopening? Note, regardless of what the governor and mayor decides to do, um, following guidelines on Dr. Fauci on to when to reopen my business. All right, so the answer was no from our epidemiologist. Um, the daily number of reported cases is influenced by many factors, and we have to look at overall trends, not a minor reduction from one day to the next. Um, and I think you'll see that guidance from um, the CDC and the White House and Dr. Fauci as well, is that you're looking for that continued um, trend downward that spans 14 days. So we can't just look at one day to the next and, and make a decision on that. Um, let's see. Okay, do you foresee um, schools opening in August? I've heard about a second wave, it's too soon to know. So yes, um, so second or third waves of infection can occur. Um, there's a good historic document on the CDC website and it talks about the three waves of influenza that occurred during the 1918 um, pandemic. And so if you'll Google 1918 pandemic influenza historic timeline, you'll see great graphics and, and really good information about how that disease went through our population in three separate waves and um, just the tremendous impact it had um, over those nearly, I think about a year is uh, how long that took. So good website to go, to go visit. Um, let's see, the virus is so small, 
will it pass through the cloth masks? So the answer to that is yes. The virus itself is very small, um, but the face covering reduces the droplet particles that, uh, sp that spread the virus um, because the virus is carried on these droplet particles. So if we can reduce the amount of droplet particles going into the air, you're reducing the amount of virus that can be spread. So they're, um, they are still effective in that, that manner. Um, let's see. So MCHD, why don't you supply the citizens the proper face masks and give them to the grocery stores and essential businesses? Um, let's see, we strongly recommended wearing cloth masks. Okay, so cloth face coverings are not intended to protect the wearer. It's to protect those around you. Um, they are made with simple materials that you probably have at home. I know we've talked about t-shirts and bandanas being used for uh, protective face coverings. So we really need your help, you the individual, to protect the health of the community. That's where the decisions you make help to impact the health and improve the health of those around you. Um, pandemic flu is an unprecedented event and we need everyone pulling in the same direction to successfully get through it. So um, just keep that in mind. Whenever you put those masks on, it's not necessarily for the protection of your health, it's the protection of the health of those around you and vice versa. So um, that is why we push that uh, so much. Let's see. Okay, so we've had some questions, again, relating to the nursing homes in the community. There's been a lot of news around um, long-term care facilities, experiencing illness um, among residents and, and uh, employees. And so, um, Someone asked if they, if we could tell you how many cases and deaths each one has. Um, no, we cannot um, at this time because that is protected information. Um, we have issued several media statements as have some of the facilities. Um, and so we are trying to separate the data that we have on congregate cases from community cases, um, but it's very complex. And so um, we know that whenever we have, you know, a, a facility that has a large number of positives, that will take our number up, but it's not necessarily a reflection of disease that is circulating um, within the community. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, they had recommended, you know, could we maybe just do call something facility A, facility B? Possibly, we could certainly look into that. Um, that's a good idea. So, so we'll see if there's more to come if we can do that. Um, also, do family members who are notified get to find out the number of cases at that facility or only that there is a positive case? So family members who are on file with the residency, I mean with the facility, will receive phone calls about positive residents. So that information um, is shared. So I think that brings us to the, to the end of our questions. I know there are a few others on here. Um, that we are in the process of getting answers for. So we encourage you to, to, you know, check our Facebook pages regularly. We have good information coming out there. Um, keep tuning in to see us uh, each, uh, each weekday. Um, you know, share the prevention information and do what you can to protect yourself and protect those around you. So thank you for tuning in and uh, we will have more information for you tomorrow. Be well.